Good afternoon and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story this hour. Thomas Schaefer, the state finance minister of Hesse in Germany, has allegedly committed suicide. According to the state premier, Schaefer was deeply worried over the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. The impact on Germany has been massive, giving rise to fear over the economy slipping into a recession. So far, Germany has recorded over 62,000 cases and 540 deaths. The 54-year-old Schaefer's body was found near a railway track, and authorities believe he died by suicide. The state premier, Volker Buffet, has said, and I quote, We are in shock, we are in disbelief, and above all, we are immensely sad. Buffier had worked closely with Thomas Schaefer for nearly 10 years. He said since the outbreak of the virus, Schaefer had been working day and night to help companies and workers deal with the pandemic. Schaefer was a popular candidate to become the next premier of Hesse. Hesse is home to Germany's financial capital Frankfurt, where major lenders like Deutsche Bank and Commerzbank have their headquarters. The European Central Bank is also located in Frankfurt. Thomas Schaefer had been an active politician for 20 years. He was a member of German uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel's party, the Christian Democratic Union. Several German political leaders took to Twitter, expressing shock and sadness over the nature of Schaefer's death. Outgoing chief of the CDU, Angret Krump, uh, Karen Bauer, has said in a tweet that Schaefer's sudden death shocked me, shocked all of us, and uh, Frederick Mertz, a possible successor to Merkel, also expressed his shock on Twitter. He wrote, and I quote, news about the sudden death of Thomas Schaefer has deeply shaken me. The pandemic has also sent the global economy into a tailspin. A few days ago, the German parliament approved an $814 billion aid package to protect the economy. The government is expecting the GDP to face its worst contraction since the world financial crisis in 2009. Germany's auto industry is the worst hit. The industry was already facing a global slump in demand and tough euro emission norms. Top German automakers, Mercedes, BMW and Volkswagen, have shut factories, not only in Europe, but across the world. Economists say German economy could shrink by as much as 4% in 2020. Now, reacting to Thomas Schaefer's death, a uh, left party member, Fabio de Massi, has uh, said that it is important to recognize politicians as people and acknowledge the burden they carry away from politics. It is true, especially during the pandemic, the worst suffering the world has seen since World War II. Now, we are being joined by our correspondent, Lucy Hugh, live from Brussels to talk on the overall picture of Europe. Good afternoon to you, Lucy. Let's start with this tragic news coming out of Germany. Thomas Schaefer, state finance minister in Hesse, allegedly committing suicide. We have uh, heard and we believe that he was deeply worried about the economic situation in Germany over the coronavirus. Yes, really, really tragic news coming out of Germany and has put the nation into shock. As you were just saying there, you know, drawing uh, messages of condolence from the highest level of the German government. We understand that the body of 54-year-old Thomas Schaefer was found near a railway track on Saturday. The cause of death thought to be possible suicide, though, of course, uh, there will be a proper inquiry into what happened. As you were saying, you know, Hess, the state where Thomas Schaffer was a finance minister, uh, is the home of the European Central Bank, as well as many major lenders. And it's believed uh, that Schaffer was carrying the weight of the coronavirus tragedy on his shoulders, working hard in the last few weeks to reach out to businesses, uh, but have become deeply worried and concerned. He leaves his wife behind and his children, but clearly a, a worrying development for Germany as it continues to deal with the coronavirus epidemic. Very uh, tragic indeed. Um, that says Germany is facing 62,000 cases and uh, 540 deaths. We do know that in Europe um, there are the southern neighbours, uh, Italy and Spain, uh, asking for... Um, uh, corona bonds, uh, where Germany is, is seeming against this. What is the latest with that? 
uh, certainly Italy and Spain have been calling for, of course, the two European countries that have been hit hardest by the coronavirus. The latest round of figures that have just been released by Spain show that now the number of cases has surpassed China at over 85,000. And in Italy, the, the death toll has climbed now well in excess of 10,000. So a horrifying milestone uh, for the country. What Italy and Spain and a, a number of other European countries want uh, is the creation of, of euro bonds, which is something that's previously always been ruled out. It's never been used before, but it would be a shared debt instrument, a common debt instrument uh, to raise funds. It's something that's getting some support, but as you say, opposition um, from northern, more frugal countries such as Germany and the Netherlands, who are concerned about uh, the potential for shared risk. So we had a meeting of uh, finance ministers uh, two, two weeks ago by teleconference, and then that was followed by a, a teleconference of EU Council leaders at the highest level last week, where eurobonds uh, were essentially ruled out at this stage. But finance ministers are now reviewing them, and certainly... Uh, the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has started to indicate that uh, you know, she is willing to put her weight uh, behind extraordinary measures to ensure that the uh, deep recession in the Eurozone is not as long-lasting as some are predicting. So it is a controversial measure. Certainly it's one that's unprecedented and has never been put into practice before. Uh, the other alternative is uh, uh, for the uh, Eurozone's uh, emergency bailout fund, the ESM, to be used to uh, raise uh, credit uh, for hard-hit European countries. All right. Lucy, thank you for that report. That is our correspondent, Lucy, who joining us for the latest from Brussels on coronavirus.